name is Milena Georgieva and I'm an associate professor in molecular biology at the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. I'm guest and lead editor at scientific journals and also a reviewer in many more. And when we talk about research papers and their structure and content and also purpose, we should know that it contains a very important last parts, which are called the discussion and the conclusion parts. These parts are the concluding part of our research paper, and they provide the broader overview of what we have already achieved in our research paper, what results we have already obtained, and how we will discuss these results in the light with other authors' results as well. But there are crucial differences between the discussion and the conclusion section. First comes the discussion part. The discussion part follows the results part and it is considered as one of the hardest one to be prepared and written because it should not only explain and restate our results that we have already presented, but it also have to analyze these results in the light of the existing literature on the topic. And not only analyze, but also logically re-revise our results and point out to the strength of our research, to its uniqueness and the way it answers research questions that have been already set up in the statement of our research paper. So the discussion part is the last before the conclusion paragraph, or well, it's more than one paragraph, okay, let's say one section, which is composed of three to four different paragraphs. Each of them has a specific content with a specific purpose. So the discussion part is meant to discuss our results. And this is the section where we show our knowledge of our own results and the results of other authors. It shows our knowledge and comprehension of the whole idea and the research um, hypothesis that we have already raised up in our introduction part and defended it with the results after that. And also have to uh, allow a bit of deduction of, of these results for being able to draw hypotheses and set up future perspectives. The discussion part is no more longer than 600, 700 words, but it's very relevant to the way we write and to the way we express our ideas. But the shorter and the more concise it is, the better it will be understood by the reader, because what matters is the quality of the content and not the quantity. So let's focus on the structure of the discussion part. The discussion part has four paragraphs which should be organized in one discussion. The first one paragraph begins with description of our results, of the obtained results, in the light of other authors' results, in the light of the scientific literature. It also indicates whether these results are unique, whether these results answer the questions and cover the gaps in the scientific literature that we discuss. And also it is connected with our results that we have already illustrated in the results part, but now we have to discuss. So briefly restating of our results and discussing them in the light of other authors' results. Here comes the second pylon, which is very important because it should definitely discuss our results in the light of the results of other authors. So this is the part where we have to show that our results cover specific gaps in the scientific literature. Moreover, they not only cover them, but they set up future perspectives for future work, which is which is very important. It is the whole meaning of the background of our study, and it's very, very important. 
The third part or the third pylon, let's say, is the deduction part. Here, researchers have to show the effectiveness and the uniqueness of their study. They have to discuss their results in a way to prove that they are indeed important and also and are not opposing to other authors' results or if they oppose and show some contradictory results, the authors should explain exactly here what they would like to approach in their research, how did they do it and why it is unique. And last but not the least is the hypothesis paragraph in which in order to explain their results, the authors have to set up some hypothesis because hypotheses are paving the road to new future perspectives, to new future uh, experience and also investigation in the field, which is very important. How do we write this discussion part? Well, again, the plan is very important. First, someone should know that the discussion part is very important. Of course, there are some exceptions because in some journals, the discussion part is united with the results part and we have a results and discussion part. It is also very Mm, how to say, very easy, much easier to write it because when you express your results and demonstrate them, it's very easy to discuss them in the light of other authors' results. But then at the end of this results and discussion section, again, you need one paragraph in which you should state your hypothesis. You should uh, again explain why your results are the same, similar or different to other authors' results and what's your hypothesis on this and how you will proceed. So this is some kind of an exception. But if we speak about writing a single discussion part, we should follow the rule for these four pylons around which we should build the whole general idea. Idea. Many authors, even me, sometimes make the mistake to write a lot in the discussion part, expressing knowledge and, and um, uh, knowing of the whole scientific literature, but it's not enough, it's not, it's not necessary. It, it's enough just to show that you know the literature and you can discuss your results in the light of this literature, especially, especially the gaps in this literature which you cover with your own research. So think about what kind of a discussion you're gonna write. Sit down make a plan and decide how you're gonna organize these four pylons around which you can build your discussion part and then you will do a really good meaningful job. Then the discussion is followed by the conclusion part. The conclusion part is much shorter. It's no more than two paragraphs, it's really short and the first paragraph includes again restatement of our main findings, our main conclusions of the results that we have obtained, while the second part includes our ideas and thoughts on our limitations of the study design and also of the future perspectives of addressing these limitations and, of course, the uniqueness of our research and our results should also be stated in the conclusion part. So this is the most important thing in the conclusion part. Shortly, very briefly, we restate our results again, but also show some of the limitations and the challenges that are ahead in order to set up future perspectives and also draw future perspectives for experimental work. Mm -hmm.